Well, my name is Pedro Valdez. I am from the state of Guanajuato. And right now you are in the county of San Felipe, where we got a, a, the so-called denomination of origin that in the state of Guanajuato we only have two, two counties with that. So we have a factory, uh, go, ba go back like 90 years, and I am the third generation making mezcal. We've been making mezcal, the, the Villa Suso family is making mezcal from 90 years ago, and we use all, the, all those years uh, steam for cooking, for cooking the, the agave and also in the distillation process. We use the same heat uh, source to accomplish those, those two processes. Uh, the steam uh, cooking process and distillation goes back to the early 90s when, when the Spaniards uh, brought uh, the first uh, steamers, calderas. boilers, the first boilers, calderas. Mm -hmm. So we we got two of them. Uh, unfortunately, one of those that work, <laughs> we still use it about uh, two years ago. You know, it cracked the, it cracked the, the the main the main bottle and it doesn't work any longer, so we change from those 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 equipment for new ones, but uh, we spend about uh, 84 hours cooking cooking the the agave with with the steam, and one thing that is really that, that works pretty well using the steam in the in the distillation process is that because this steam is about 120 degrees um, Celsius once we put the the steam into the in el in la olla pues in el Si quieres, cuando, el, cuando sea un término así, dilo en español y yo le pongo subtítulos a esa parte, güey. Ok. Y así que, aunque sea Spanglish, o sea, así que echarte Spanglish, yo le voy a poner subtítulos a la sí. parte donde, anda, donde haya... <coughs> este, en el alambique. Este. Uh -huh. uh, after we, we put the steam in, in, in the alambique, maybe about 10 minutes after this, the uh, distillation process begins, you know. It's a, it's a, an energy source that is goes uh, kind of better if you use direct heat in, into the into the alambiques and the cooking process using the steam uh, pre, uh, give us the the chance to prevail most of the, the of the smells and flavors that the agave plants give us mm. so what i'm saying is we don't we, our mezcal doesn't have any any um, wood notes or smoke notes and it's not it's, it is not that that we figure out uh, in the early years, uh, the way we been making mezcal goes maybe about a hundred, uh, uh, 200 and 250 years ago. We haven't changed nothing. The way we cook, the way we, uh, the, the fermentation process, we, we still using the same things. So that's why I think we are artisanals, you know, because it goes really, Long, maybe 100, 100, 120 years back in the steam process, but the fermentation process is the same that maybe they used 200, 250 years ago. I don't know, because 
I don't know how how back in the history on the years can you or can we um, name it artisanal producers or no? What I what I'm really telling you is that this process has been in this factory 70 years, and the way we do it, it goes back maybe a hundred years ago. So it, it, it have to try to make a line time or something like that uh, to say that, uh, if you use the way to produce maybe about uh, 10 years ago maybe you are not artisanal but if you use it the same way that goes back a hundred years I think you are artisanal we use some something that is called uh, miel amarga that I don't know any any other producer that use it uh, besides the ones uh, in this in this in this area no I'm not the only one who use it I'm, I'm gonna tell you that but uh, maybe we use that three or four factories we we use that this this uh, this sugar that doesn't have too many concentration of sugar but uh, it's very rich in the smells and and flavors and it comes out out of the cooking process because our ovens are above ground we can save this 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 low sugar honey say like that and we have to cook it uh, we reduce uh, at half of the concentration of the, uh, half of the volume. If we got maybe 200 liters, we cook it until we got only half of them. And it's part of our fermentation process. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that. Uh, well, I'm pretty sure that it uh, makes the, the, the beverage uh, so full uh, and so rich of flavors and, and smells, but I don't know what happens if we use fibers like you said, you know, we never use that. Besides, besides that, we use this other sugar that, believe me, not, no, not too many people know what is, what is, what is, what is that. Where the Alambis come from, I think they come with the with, with the Spaniards. Uh, some native uh, tribes, uh, you know, the historians or the los historiadores have found uh, that main, uh, some some of of, of the of them. Uh, have the distillation process in their culture, culture, but uh, no, no, uh, like a, like a big thing, and and they didn't use it too much. Before the the Spaniards, uh, the use of the of the honeys, the agave honeys, was the aguamiel, and the fermentation of the aguamiel that is the pulque. And once the Spaniards came, I think the, the, the la industria del destilado de agave uh, was was found and and became in this region very very big. Well, I want to tell you something. Maybe uh, two or three miles in a straight line that way, you can find a factory that is it was named the Soledad. It's a factory that, if you see the ovens that I got, those ovens, they carry like 15 tons. The ovens that they use, they are, they are like four or five times bigger than this one. And they got, I don't remember if they got three or four. So the production was very big, you know. I can produce right now maybe 12,000 liters a month they, can, they, they could produce maybe 50 or 60,000 liters a month. I'm going to tell you that is, that, that is beginning back, back in, the, in the light 
in the late 70s, maybe 1760, 1770s, something like that, like 200 and 200 plus years ago. But this hacienda, this big hacienda, they didn't have only that factory. Uh, right now, at the nowadays, we count maybe like uh, 30 factories, and all of them uh, with the same with the same capacity, you know. So the 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 production was was is incredible, uh, real big. If you do the numbers, you will find that those guys were making in the late 70s and the 1800s and and the early 1900s. They were making maybe about a seven, eight, nine million liters every year. I do believe that, and the hand to hand, the minery industry in Mexico, in the center part of Mexico, and kind of going of up north, in the state of really well, Guanajuato, uh, San Luis Potosí, Zacatecas. There were there 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 were uh, uh, the the mining uh, industry was very big. Um, when I figure out these uh, many factories of, of, of this big hacienda that was called the El Marquesado de Miguel de Berrio, uh, and I found out how many liters of mezcal they made. That back in the beginning was mezcal. The real thing that was vino mezcal, and that vino mezcal was a, uh, it had a, a low alcohol alcohol percent, maybe like uh, 20, 29 percent, 28, 29 percent. We still making that 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 product right now. And once I figure out how many they made, I got like a sisma, you know, like. A, I didn't know what happened. Okay, they made it. So where they sell it or what they use for? And digging, digging a deeper in the history, I found out that this product was used uh, every day in the with the, the miners use it every day because they made everything by hand, you know like those really in perforation, you know, and, and taking, the, taking the material out of the mines uh, at back in the beginning was, was by, by hand or by, uh, by men, men, men back, let's say something like that, you know. But it, uh, so that's what, where I found out where this, this product was, was, was consumed. In the state of Guanajuato, one of the largest points of distribution of this, this product was San Miguel de Allende, that is a very tourist <laughs> place right now, because that's between the city of Guanajuato and the south part of the state, where the mining uh, was settled back on those days. But the, the industry of mezcal was, or well, if you want to say it well, it wasn't mezcal, it was vino mezcal back on those days. Uh, right here, uh, it was a, a very big industry, very, uh, no, uh, and, and, and you, can, you can see it right now because you see the Palenques in Oaxaca, they are not very big, you know that. Well, they are big factories, so they are producers that they have several Palenques and they, they, they can uh, become big, but in here, you can find uh, very large factories, you know. Well, back in the in the same order of ideas, the first thing for me is respect the consumers. Uh, they got our preference, and well, they can they can drink whatever whatever they wish. But if you ask my personal opinion, I think that it's it has a a more Tienes más mérito. I don't know how to say it in English. Excuse me, my English is a little rusty. But uh, to 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 take to the market a, a liquor that it has a full profile of 
smells and and flavors with the low uh, with the low percent of al alcohol. I believe that it's more merit than that than you see these high concentrations. But any but at the end is the consumer's preference. Well, good. you know, the ethanol is uh, is the, the 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 alcohol, and it has. Uh, if you have more concentration of it, you maybe have more flavors in Mars smells with this high concentration. The concentration goes lower to keep those to keep those flavors and 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 the smells in the lower concentration. I think has more merit. That's what I that's what I believe because I do believe something. Le well, they use they, they call us nowadays maestros mezcaleros. Uh, I kind of like that, but I don't really like too much. We just work, and we work with with you know uh, with dedication. And I don't have too much uh, years in here. I got two eight years only, but as I am an uh, industrial engineer, I do understand really this process and I want to keep it the way it is. I don't have any any expectation of change anything, you know. I want to keep the way it was. You know, I like and I love traditions. So that's 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 my thinking, you know. I I don't know too and, and I, I don't know too much about this. Well I, I know too much mm -hmm. but I don't like to become on like uh, controversies. Who knows more and who knows less? I don't know. And and they 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 ask me, how do you give the beverage a profile? And I, uh, my answer of that is, I don't give it. I just try to prevail prevail it prevail the most I insist uh, smells and flavors that's our that, that's our our challenge to bring the flavors and the smells to the to the nature into a, into a into a cup there's the newsletter quote to that point in your personal opinion, what is your definition of a maestro mescalero, and are you a maestro mescalero? Well, they say I am. I am just working. <laughs> I'm prevailing our our way of of, of of living. If you wanna call me like that, that's okay. But I don't think that I I am a master. <laughs> I, I I learn too many things every day. And I think I'm gonna die uh, learning something. So, well, you know, I think we are humble. Uh, we like our activity. We enjoy it, and we can perform. And we want to perform it as best we can. So, do you have an idea or a definition of what is a maestro mescalero, or you don't know mm. about? <laughs> Maybe the, the one that makes mezcal, the one to make the profile. Well, as I tell you, I don't make the profile. I just keep it. I think we have more than enough. I am I want to give them a branding position. Can you tell me about the name of your brand and the history yes. and significance behind it? Yeah, our primary brand is Villasuso. And right now it's the last name of my wife's uh, family. They came from Spain, of the region of Galicia. And they say that in Gallego, that's, that's the language of those guys, uh, Villasuso means the village of Jesus. Well, we kind of like that. Well, I think the the market is open to anyone, but if you ask my well, my thinking, uh, I think that you we have to 
bring the world a product that that has too many tradition, you know, and preserve this product. I think is our goal. We, I, 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 I don't attempt, uh, as I told you, uh, to do new things and change my process. No, I, I, I don't think uh, about anything of that, you know. We, we have a way to to rise the fermentation process of this agave that is kind of hard because the, the sugar concentration of this of this agave is too low. It's like a 14 degrees, um, brick degrees. So make the the fermentation process work is kind of hard, and we we still do it the way that used to be many years ago. We don't use any concentrated concentrated uh, bacteria that, that that we can find in the market right now. We keep our, our, our way. And this is a personal question for me. If you were to describe Mescal in one word, how would you describe Mescal? One word. It's a beautiful woman. <laughs>